Hi, my name's Stuart Lynch, and this is the fourth of a nine-part series on understanding how to parse JSON using the Codable protocol in Swift and Swift UI. In this video, we'll see how you can decode dates that are presented in a number of different formats in our JSON object. We'll first take a look at the JSON decoder date decoding strategy, and if your date is expressed as a string, I'll show you a great date formatter site to help you with creating your date formats. And then we'll look at various other date decoding strategies. If this is something you want to learn, keep watching. There is no JSON standard for dates, much to the distress of every programmer who has ever worked with them. JSON decoder and JSON encoder, which we'll cover later, will by default use a double representation of the date's time interval since reference date, which is not very common in the wild you'll need a date strategy. Let's consider this JSON code snippet. Let's create a person struct that is decodable and represent the three key value pair properties like this. In this case, the birthday is being represented as a string, so you might want to make the corresponding struct property for birthday a string as well, and then perhaps use a computed property to calculate the date. Fortunately, we don't need to do this. We can change birthday to a date rather than a string. And in preparation for our decoding, we can create a date formatter like this. Now, if you're ever stuck on trying to figure out how to create the date format for a particular date, you can go to the nsdateformatter.com site. And here you can easily create the proper format string. I'll leave a link to the site in the notes below. With that defined, we can use what should be now our familiar three-step process for JSON decoding, but add one more step, our date decoding strategy. First, we convert the string to data. I'm beginning to sound like a broken record now, but our JSON decoder requires a data object to decode. We'll not do any pretesting here with any guard statements and just assume our data is valid and force unwrap. Next, we define our decoder. And with our decoder declared, we can specify a date decoding strategy. Simply start your decoder followed by a period and choose date decoding strategy. After the equal sign, type another period and you'll get a choice of options. For us, it's the dot .formatted option so that we can choose it and pass in our formatter that we just defined. We'll look at the others in a minute. The next step to decode our data should be familiar now. We'll declare it this person and try to decode it, assuming no errors with the try exclamation mark. Our type is the person type dot self, and the data is our person JSON data. Testing our data with a print statement to display the date, we see that we're good. The key is to recognize the date format and what your date decoding strategy will be. For example, you might see this. This is an ISO 8601 date format, so your date decoding strategy will be decoder.date decoding strategy is .iso 8601. You have a number of options that you can pick for date formatter. The key is to choose one. If none of them seem to work, then you might have to create a custom date decoding strategy. And you can find out more detail in this blog by User Loaf and another one by Paul Hudson. I'll put these references in the notes. Let's just do one more example. In the sources folder for this playground, there is a JSON file called events.json. In the last episode, I showed you how to load a JSON file from your application bundle. But before we do that, we need to know what our JSON feed should be mapped to. Copy the contents of this file and paste it back into our JSON formatter site that we talked about in the last video. We'll process it and copy from here and paste it back in our bundle file so we can look at it more closely. It's pretty clear now that we have an array of two objects and it's perfectly valid JSON. 
we can create a struct that represents that object. And it looks to be like it's an event. So let's create a decodable event struct. We have a name that's a string and a date that appears to be an integer or a double. In fact, it's the Unix Epoch timestamp. It's the number of seconds that have elapsed since the Unix Epoch, which is the number of seconds since 1970. And it's a common format. Fortunately, this is one of the date decoding strategies that we can use. And the third looks like a string, but it's actually a URL. And it too is a valid type that JSON decoder will decode correctly. So our struct can look like this. This time, now let's be safe and use guard statements for our three processes. First, make sure that the source URL is valid by accessing the bundle.main.url for the resource events with extension JSON and create a fatal error if it fails. Next, convert the contents of the source's URL to data using an optional try block, and if that fails, give another fatal error. And now we define our new decoder that will use this new date decoding strategy, so let's call it decoder2, and the date decoding strategy that we've already discussed, which is the number of seconds since 1970. And then finally, decode the data into an array of events, but use the guard in case it fails. From our events JSON data, we see that we are expecting to decode an array, so we can use an array of event for the type, and we're getting that from the event JSON data. To check whether or not we have the information correctly, let's run a loop through our events and print out all of the properties. Again, we have success. We see our Vancouver event is at 9 a.m. on February 29th, 2020, and the Los Angeles one is on April 29th at 11 a.m. I hope you've enjoyed this video and have learned something. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. That will encourage me to keep on creating more like this in an effort to help new and existing iOS developers hone their skills and move on to the next level. I am most active on Twitter, so be sure to follow me there and get all the latest news of what I'm up to.